Okay, well welcome to part two of the URM 25D restoration. Once again, the name here is Alex and my ham radio call sign is WA2BMB. Now, I think you all remember how badly this looked before we started uh, to clean it up. Uh, I used ammonia and water about a 60-40 or 70-30 uh, mixture. Uh, make sure you use it outside. It's very powerful, very potent. Um, do not mix anything with ammonia other than water. Uh, I wouldn't use it straight on this. It's a little bit too strong. You got to dilute it down a little bit. And uh, after that, I polished it with some car polish. And I used this wax to uh, to wax it and it came out and worked out really well I have no interest no financial interest in this company whatsoever I bought this uh, this bottle of this stuff several years ago and uh, you use it sparingly and it's lasted me for years it's not cheap uh, I've seen it on sale at uh, or I should say for sale at West Marine uh, they use it in marine and airline uh, applications from what I understand from reading the bottle as you can see right there so if you look it up on the internet I'm sure you'll be able to find it it doesn't always say insulator wax uh, sometimes it just says wax but apparently you could use this on electronic in electrical insulators on telephone poles and whatnot to pr help preserve them so uh, I figured if it's good enough for that, it's good enough for me. I tried it a few years ago, pretty much fell in love with it. So this is the wax that you get. Or you can go with your regular uh, whatever turtle wax or whatever automotive wax you have. Just make sure you have your toothbrush handy to, uh, to uh, get rid of the, uh, the excess uh, wax that accumulates in little nooks and crannies. Also, I replaced the line cord, which was horrible. Got that done. Um, also, I'm still working on this power supply. I have all the capacitors removed. I don't understand why they went uh, south, or the one went south. They are uh, highly rated at 600 volts. And I think the most volts you get out of this power supply is like 220. So why they failed, I don't know. Uh, I know what didn't help was whenever you work on equipment like this, or any electronic equipment, don't take it for granted that they put one amp fuses where their one amp fuse is supposed to be. I had a five amp and a ten amp fuse in here, which may have helped to uh, to disgorge uh, the capacitor's guts all over this rig. So, uh, so there you go. I also want to show you this. You remember how badly it looked inside of here? Well, I also removed several dents. Now you should keep that in mind for later on in the video. And, uh, and that, uh, that's what helped me look a little bit closer and find what actually was the problem uh, with this radio. Uh, the problem ended up being that there was no RF output on any of the bands. And uh, after about two hours, uh, I figured it out. Now also, uh, it was clear that someone was in there uh, before me trying to figure it out, and they could not. They went to a couple of test sites, which uh, which uh, Langford uh, talks about in his notes, and uh, they couldn't find any problems, so they were at a loss. So they kind of just tossed it on the uh, trash heap of history here, or I should say the ash bin of history. But we're slowly bringing it back. Um, once we got the uh, RF going, uh, of, uh, to no surprise, the, uh, the AF didn't work. So in the second part of this uh, video, we're, uh, we're going to show you uh, how it looks uh, in the working stage. So uh, we're going to take a brief pause and uh, come back to you with that section of the video. And we're back. As you can see from the scope, we've got an output. How nice is that? And it's a 24 1.1764 megahertz. 
and that's fairly close to where it is on the dial and as you can see now the meter is adjust is adjustable you can adjust the output and everything's working as it should be um, like I said it turned out to be the ground on the turret that uh, that was the problem and uh, I believe it was uh, the problem started because of the uh, the jolt that it took when it was dropped so there you go uh, it's fluctuating a little bit for some reason I think I'm just banging the uh, the cord around um, I wanted to show you also a problem that I could see coming that uh, I knew was on the way I'm going to switch this over to the extern to the audio input audio output now this should be on 400 cycles I want to show you something now I have this turned up all the way this has absolutely no bearing on the meter at all I right now have it turned to zero what you're looking at there is noise I recalibrated the scope and as you can see there's no sine wave there it's nothing but uh, but noise and it's the same thing on the thousand uh, cycle per second uh, connection so as in my other three this also has another problem with the uh, with the audio output but uh, as stated uh, we all know that uh, the problem is uh, is the capacitors that are uh, in the audio circuit that need to be replaced so uh, as you can see right now we're back on the you can see how it can easily be varied because it's not noise it's actually signal uh, also uh, you could turn it and uh, put it on this connection connection also this is for the um, millivolt part if I can get it in there I should say that should be the setting and as you could see by the meter and the scope that I'm going to bring into better calibration here and there's a beautiful signal right there at 24 point one six zero two megahertz isn't that pretty and that's on a digital scope which they aren't exactly known for their uh, pretty representations but uh, that's pretty nice pretty nice uh, result and that's on this uh, circuit here also I could take the control and I could vary the output so there you go acting the way it should now before I talked about uh, the case being dented I'm pretty sure that's what uh, precipitated the further uh, demise of the uh, of the ground connection to the turret here so uh, that being said take note if you see uh, damage uh, to the case of any uh, electronic instrument whether it's test gear or a radio or whatever uh, there may have been damage caused by that dropping, that vibration, that shock. I think that is what broke loose of the ground. Uh, how I was able to find that was I just uh, measured the tuned circuit on these turrets um, in relation to ground and there wasn't any. And that's when I was able to look far into that uh, uh, into the tuning capacitor there and see where the damage was. Also I wanted to did want to mention uh, you're going to need a pencil type soldering gun to get in there or soldering iron rather um, and when you solder that connection to the turret make sure that it's not on any one of the um, any one of the circuits tune circuits put it somewhere in the middle tune the turret by hand until it, the detent is released solder it because that circuit you might either damage it with the excess heat or um, it may wick away some of the heating power 
of the uh, of the uh, the, the uh, soldering iron. So you want the maximum amount of heat on there to ensure a good connection. Uh, and as for the audio, this is the section right here that I'm going to be uh, involved with next. It's all in the Lankford notes that I mentioned in the first uh, in the first video. That's uh, Dallas Lankford, L-A-N-K-F-O-R-D. Uh, they're for free on the internet. Just download them and off you go. I did not uh, did not uh, check into all the other quote unquote problem capacitors in the different circuits because I'll be honest with you, it, it's fixing them is not the problem. Getting to them uh, is. The uh, Lankford notes are very specific and, and very helpful when it comes down to uh, taking this thing apart and doing what you have to do, gaining access to the different boards. But to be honest with you, uh, if it works, I'm not going to fix it. But uh, right now, this, uh, this section right here definitely has to uh, be looked at. I've got to remove, I think, it's, I think it's a half a dozen or eight capacitors in there and replace them in order to get my audio signal back. Uh, I will make a, uh, a third or part three video and uh, I will use that um, as a tutorial, but I'm not going to take you step by step replacing all eight capacitors. Uh, suffice it to say that every capacitor mounted on this board is going to be replaced. Uh, because uh, if they're not leaking and bad now, they will be. So don't go in there and just replace one or two. Replace them all. Uh, don't play games. You replace them all, and this single generator will outlast both of us. And uh, the next person who gets it from you will be very happy that you did it. <laughs> so there you go. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helps you. Remember, use your five senses. Uh, don't rely 100% on fancy test equipment. It's nice to have. But uh, sometimes all you need is uh, magnifying glass, uh, knowledge of the circuit, and uh, an ohm meter. So, uh, so there you are. Please be careful. There are voltages in here that could seriously ruin your day. Uh, so if you work on this, it's all on you. But uh, please uh, enjoy yourself and, uh, and use max maximum caution whenever you're working on a circuit like this. Most of the circuit work that I did on this was done with it unplugged. Uh, before you start going into the circuits, uh, if you don't have a tube tester, you can substitute the tubes out. But I tested all my tubes on a tube tester, and they all tested out just fine. So that's another thing that led me to believe that uh, it was on a tube problem. It was most definitely a, uh, a problem uh, with the connection on the turret. Once again, it affected all the bands and not just one. And by the same token, it affected one of the bands. You would also go to the turret also. If there's no output out of these out of the oscillator at point A, uh, which is here, if there's no output there, there's a problem with the turret or the oscillator tube. There should be an output uh, at the bare wire and the feed through right there. If there isn't, check the uh, oscillator and the uh, associated tune circuits. So that's it for now. Uh, we'll see you in part three, and I wish you the very best. Stay safe and be well. Take care. Uh, have a wonderful day from uh, WA2PMB, Alex in uh, Western Central New Jersey. Bye-bye for now.